see those 40s over there? Grab two bottles and let's dip. No, I'm not st stealing 40s with you. I drove uh, the, dr the drunk bus as well in, at Kent State University. I, I went to school there from, um, it was like 2001 to 2005. I started driving this really weird route called, we, we call it the drunk bus, I think it was called the downtowner, but it was before Uber and Lyft and all those services that now I think made it obsolete. We would take you from the campus to the bars so you weren't, people weren't drunk driving, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it was actually a great service. It was free and kids loved it, but it became like a really fun um, party on the bus. People would ride around, not even without a destination. And I had some regulars. Pineapple, who plays himself in the movie, actually was my security guard. When I moved from Ohio to New York City, I kind of like always thought that would be a really interesting sort of contained story to tell. John and I threw around the idea of like, um, you know, clerks on a bus kind of uh, as an elevator pitch. And then John threw a lot of his personal story and his kind of like college stories to it. Our screenwriter, Chris Molinaro, um, did as well. But, um, but yeah, so it comes from a real place. It's almost like a stage play uh, where you could have one set with all the characters coming in and out of. Um, and then we, yeah, we start to build the, the, the universe of like Michael's apartment and what goes on when we take the viewer off the bus with Michael. A lot of the characters around, you know, the two main characters, which is Pineapple and, and Michael, played by Charlie Tahan from Ozark and Pineapple himself. And one of those awesome characters is, I hope he's right below me. I was going to do this where if you, if you lean up. Oh. No, I don't think the technology is there. I appreciate <laughs> the sentiment, though. Devo Ted was a combination. I don't know if you know this, Dave. I don't think we ever told you, but it's a combination of two real people. It's a drug dealer named, his name was Ted. He would walk around campus with a cat on his shoulder and a cat always just like st stayed there. I don't know how, it, how he did that, but um, he was a really weird dude. He was like one of those dudes that would like wear, you know, like the sandals with the socks, you know, like those kinds of guys. But then the other character that it's based on, uh, on is, uh, is a guy who was just obsessed with Devo, everything Devo, and he was just like a Devo fanatic. And I just thought that was really interesting. So we, we have the wonderful Dave Hill who played that character. When you talk about building the worlds too, like Devo Ted's apartment is such a specific, like claustrophobic space as well. They actually sent me to live there for two months before shooting, which I thought was a weird choice. <laughs> Uh, but I did it. The hardest thing for me about shooting the, the movie was the bagel bites. We kept, you know, having to do the bagel bites and then there's only, you know, I'm only human. There's only so long you can be working with a tray of bagel bites for now. <laughs> I'm going to have to have some fucking bagel bites r really soon. And then I, you know, I, I would act like it was just my character wanting bagel bites, but it was really me, Dave. We were so excited when Bagel Bites, uh, we got, we got like, they're like an official sponsor. When they told us that we could use their stuff, we were, I remember being so excited. We were going to try and get a lot of Bagel Bites for the, the rap party at uh, South By. This was meant to premiere at South By, then it was going to play at the Cleveland Film Festival. Talk to me sort of about how what's happening is, uh, is affecting the movie. It seems bad. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I don't know. I mean, I can't speak to... Uh... <laughs> anything really i all i can say uh, uh, that i was really looking forward to uh the premiere i'm hoping that you know once things get a little bit safer out there we can have a really uh great uh party and uh devo ted can assume his rightful place in <laughs> cinematic history it sucked at first it was a big gut punch and you know a lot of people felt it and um but then that, that quickly got sort of, um, that quickly sw faded away when we realized how, how, how horrible this pandemic was and how people were dying and we're like, oh, our film. 
turned into like, you know, it's, this is something larger. What we hope to do is when this, when we come out of this is to have some sort of screening in New York, LA. At this point, we're just trying to get distribution and, and um, it seems like we're pretty close with a few people. So do you have a, like a good driving the bus story or a bad one? Just like, is that shit story a real story? You know what I mean? The shit story is, is a real story, but it was, it's not mine. It's, it's somebody else's. It was on like the called, it was called the campus loop. Someone was driving it and this woman, she was wearing a skirt and she got up to go to, to leave and she stopped and she got really sick and it just, it just came out. And that's how it happens. <laughs> yeah. They called it the campus poop after that. That's the, that's the punchline to this story. <laughs> campus poop. Um, what a shitty thing to have had happen. Thanks. Yeah. Al- <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm low blood sugar. But it did smell for days and days and days, and they couldn't get rid of the smell. So that part in the movie, when there are people, kids keep getting on the on the bus, and they're like, "Oh, what's that smell?" That that that's that comes from a real story. Those are the stories. Like everyone says, like, "Don't worry, no one's going to remember that in twenty years." Like that's everyone's going to remember that <laughs> it's, forever. It's been immortalized. <laughs> <laughs>